Hi everyone, what we're going to be talking about today is finding the resultant electric field when we have more than one charge. Let's start off with an example in which we have two charges, charge A and charge B with, uh, charges, with the charges being 1 millicoulomb and 3 millicoulombs. They're both positive charges and the problem is asking us to find the resultant electric field at point P, which is 30 centimeters away from one of the charges and 70 centimeters away from the other charge. Now, when we have a problem like that, the best way to approach it would be to draw the two vectors separately first. So we're going to need to find the electric field just from A alone and then just from B afterwards. Let's start off with the electric field from uh, from charge A, well, this will just be a radial vector which will be coming out of A because A is a positive charge electric field will be radiating outwards. So this will just be a vector which will be pointing in this direction. And I'm just going to call that, let's say, EA, which is just the electric field at point P due to charge A. The other electric field will also be pointing radially outwards, so this is going to be pointing to the left, and uh, because I'm not really sure about the sizes of those fields because we haven't calculated them yet, the size of the arrows at this point is just a guess. So uh, let's just draw the other electric field which will be uh, radiantly outwards as well. So it's going to be to the left. And just to differentiate that, um, actually let's draw it with a solid line rather than a dotted line. So this will be along here, like this, and where this over here is point P. And we're going to call this EB. Once again, the size of the arrows is unknown at the moment. Um, I just wanted to visualize this with in terms of its direction. Now the resultant electric field, I'm just going to call that ER, you can clearly see will be found by the difference of those two electric fields. In other words, this will be EA minus EB. The reason why I'm taking those away is because they're pointing in two different directions. So now that we have an expression for the resultant electric field, we can use our formula for a, for a point charge or a spherical charge, it's exactly the same formula, to find out the magnitude of the resultant electric field. So ER will be equal to the electric field due to A alone, which will be, uh, let's just write that down in terms of formula first. So there'll be QA, the, where QA is a charge of, um, of charge A over 4 pi epsilon naught R squared minus QB, where QB is just the charge of charge B, divided by 4 pi epsilon naught R2 squared. And this over here is the distance to A, and this over here will be the distance to B. Okay, so now we're ready to substitute some uh, numbers into our formula. And what we're going to get for uh, this is charge A is 1 millicoulomb. Remember that. So that's 1.0 times 10 to the power of minus 3 coulombs, like so, over 4 pi. Epsilon naught is just 8.85 times 10 to the power of minus 12 like so, multiply by Ra squared, which is 30 centimeters. We need to convert that to meters, so it's going to be 0.3 squared, like so. And from that, we need to take away uh, the charge of B, which is 3 millicoulombs, so it's going to be 3 times 10 to the power of minus 3, like so. Once again, over 4 pi epsilon naught, so it's going to be 4 pi times 8.85 
multiply by 10 to the power of minus 12 like so and the distance to charge B as you can see is 70 centimeters so it's going to be times 0.7 meters squared and if we put that into a scientific calculator what we're going to get is approximately 4.5 times 10 to the power of 7 newtons per coulomb up to two significant figures like so so this is our resultant electric field strength at point p okay folks so hopefully that makes sense let's have a look at another example now for our second example all that i have done is literally just change the sign of charge a so this is now a negative charge let's see whether we can now calculate the electric field strength at point p the first thing to do as always would be to think about which directions are the individual electric fields going remember this is now a negative charge and the electric field goes into a negative charge radially so that means that the electric field does something like this so it goes along here it goes along here goes along here goes along here here etc like so let's draw a few more so that means that at point p the electric field due to a is now going to be pointing to the left so this over here will be the electric field due to a at point p well which way is the electric field pointing at around charge b now just to differentiate this i'm going to draw this with a different color uh, the electric field around b is positive this means that it's pointing out of the charge so at any point around b the electric field will be going like this and like this and like this i'm just going to get rid of the this arrow which just shows the distance over here and over here it will be like this over here it will be like this etc so that means that the electric field vector at point p will also be going to the left in fact i'm just going to draw this maybe slightly further down i'm just going to delete this 30 centimeters and i'm going to write that down a little bit lower but the electric field due to b at this point let's presume that it's a little bit smaller will be going like this so now they're both pointing in exactly the same direction so this means that now in order to find out the resultant electric field what I need to do is not take them away as we did before but I need to add them so this minus sign is going to turn into a plus sign and this minus sign will turn into a plus sign and this minus sign will also turn into a plus sign this means that if we put this now into a scientific calculator notice that everything else remains unchanged the distances remain unchanged and the uh, size of the charge remains unchanged it's only the um, the, the the sign which uh, actually is altered but if we put this into a scientific calculator we're going to get 1.5 times 10 to the 8 newtons per coulomb okay folks now just to summarize the way we add electric fields when we have more than one charge is as follows we think about which way are the electric fields actually going remember the electric field is just a vector we draw the electric field from one charge then we draw the electric field from 
the other charge. If they're going the same way, we add them. If they're going the other way, so if one is going left, the other one is going right, we take them away from each other. We find the resultant field using the formula q over 4 pi epsilon naught r squared. Quite a common misconception is to think about whether you're adding or take away uh, or you are taking away the, the electric fields is to be going by the charge. So let's say if QB was minus, we would take them away. That's actually a mistake because what we're looking at is the magnitude of the electric field. So if they are going the same direction, we need to add them. If um, they are going in opposite ways, we need to take them away. Okay, folks, so hopefully that makes sense. If there are any questions, please feel free to drop a comment down below. Thank you.